Hi guys, welcome to another day of Oxano. It is the second to the last day and I'm so excited that you are still here. If this is your very first time, don't worry. You can always catch up on all you've missed. You've missed a lot actually, but you can always catch up. I have a whole playlist of all the videos and episodes we've done saved here. If you're on podcast, you'll see it sequentially, okay? So um, you've not missed too much. It's not that bad. You can always go back. But I want you to follow through today and tomorrow then you go back to the beginning okay so for today's devotional we'll be talking about something that i started a couple of days ago the armor of god and explaining what the armor of god means right um i have talked about breastplate of righteousness i've talked about um the, the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace i've talked about the belt of truth as well so I'm going deeper from Ephesians 6, verse 14 to 18. So I'm picking up from verse 16, where it talks about other parts of the armor of God. So let's go. Verse 16 says, in addition to this, take up the shield of faith with which you, will, with, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So let's pause here. The shield of faith. Now, at the beginning we learned that the armor of God has an end purpose. Putting on the armor of God has an end purpose so that you will stand against the wiles of the devil or the schemes of the devil. So it's not just for you to put on the armor or for putting on sick. There is a reason why you, you should put on this armor of God. You are standing against the deception of the devil. That's the end goal, right? So it, it's amazing that the shield of faith has a more specific role it says so we so that you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one now i want you to think in battle mode right you may have watched um medieval films or you know war films and how the enemy camp would fire arrows that are lit on fire or, or fire arrows are lit on fire shoot arrows that are lit on fire and the shield is supposed to protect the soldier who should have received the arrow so i want you to picture that and that's what paul is trying to describe here so the, in many war films you see that the soldiers will gather together make a formation so the soldiers are outside the formation will form a wall with their shields and then the ones that are inside will form like a ceiling with their shields but the whole point is that when the enemy shoots those arrows it won't touch the soldiers now, collectively, we can lift up the shield of faith as believers amongst us, right? And there are several theologians that believe that this part of the armor of God is for the church collectively. And I don't disagree. But when you are not in church, where you are not surrounded by believers, we can still use the shield of faith. So what is faith in this instance? What does faith imply in this instance? I love how Clarence Haynes, he's a Christian Bible teacher, I love how he defines faith. He says, faith is believe in who God said he is and what he said he will do. It's very simple and I love it. So let's break it down. We've been talking about the shield of faith, the belt of truth, um, the gospel of peace. And we see that in this context, Paul was making a heavy emphasis on the gospel. right? But it also extends to the general word of God. So when you talk about faith, First and foremost, we are talking about faith in the gospel. Faith in the gospel is a shield for you. It defends you from the attacks of the devil that, that are waging war with what you know about what God has done for you in salvation. See, the whole summary of the devil's schemes in this regard is an attack of your faith. It's an attack on your mind. He's not just trying to attack your body. When he's trying to attack your body, there's an end goal, your mind, your confidence in what god has said about you and who god is when the devil brings sad situations tricky situations your way or you are in a, a tight corner what the devil is looking for is not just that you fall prey of those situations he's looking for you to question the goodness of god in that situation he's looking for you to question god's love for you in that situation he's looking for you to question if you are really saved You've been struggling with this habit for the longest time. Are you really saved? Does God really love you? Do you really have the Holy Ghost? You lifting a shield of faith in this regard is 
arming yourself with the knowledge of what God has said, despite what the devil is trying to throw at you. So now his fiery darts or his flaming arrows in this regard look like discouragement, look like disappointments, look like um, condemnation. Okay, so the shield of faith is confidence in what God has said. How do you apply this practically? So let's say you're having a very, 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 very bad day and you're so disappointed, you're discouraged. Applying the shield of faith in this regard is picking the word of God and just insisting what, on what it says. I believe that I am saved by the blood of Jesus. I may be struggling with this temptation, but I affirm that God is working in me, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. This is very similar when it talks later in the same series of verses and it talks about the sword of the spirit being the word of God. And over the um, past few days, I have hammered on how to use the word of God in battle. And I just explained a bit of it now, so I won't dwell too much on that. There are two more parts of this ammo I want us to take a look at before we wrap up today's devotional. And one of it is the helmet of salvation. I was having a conversation with my husband today and we're just talking about this verse and i asked him to just like tell me what he felt about the helmet of salvation being um part of the armor of god and there's a, a way he described it that i really really love he talked about how a helmet is supposed to protect your head your head houses your brain which is practically the most vital organ arguably in your body because if your brain does not tell your heart to pump blood that's a problem if your brain does not send signals to your body, that's a problem. So your helmet is meant to shield your brain. It's meant to shield your mind. And as I said earlier, most of the attacks that the devil brings your way is an attack on your mind. Joyce Mayer put it this way, that we fight spiritual battles in the battlefield of our mind. So many of the, the, the battles you fight in your life may never be um, that you will see the devil in your room. He will come with a pitchfork and he wants to stab you or something like that he can take those manifestations right but many times the biggest battles are in our minds battles of fear battles of anxiety battles of a lack of peace of doubts battles of indifference of lethargy of pain of grief all those battles sit in your mind you can't tangibly hold them you can't touch them but they are very real battles and when the helmet of salvation is is put on as an armor of god you are just affirming that your life is hidden in jesus your life is hidden in jesus like the the whole point of you even being able to wear the armor in the first place is that you are saved if you are not saved you don't have access to the armor of god to put on so a reminder of what god has done for you in salvation a firm knowledge of that serves as a helmet for you so when the devil is trying to attack your mind the seat of your will when he's trying to attack your your will and say oh don't pray today oh don't do this thing that safe people should do don't pray don't walk in righteousness that knowledge of your salvation and what it affords you stands against the devil's schemes against your mind in that moment let me know if it's clear just let me know in the comment section if you're following and if it's clear to you. Now, there's one last thing I want to share in this Armor of God discussion. It's prayer. And it, it's in verse 18. It says, and pray in spirit on all occasions with all prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and keep on praying for the Lord's people. Now, some people debate that prayer is not part of the Armor of God. It ends at the sword of the Spirit. Some people argue that prayer is a part of the armor of God. And wherever you fall, I want you to take a step back to preceding verses and look at what the armor of God was intended for. Verse 11 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Every part of the armor of God is supposed to equip you to take a stand against the devil and all his lies and his deception. Now, if you want to argue that, oh, um, according to the construction of Paul's words, and this may not be part of the armor he was listing, he may be talking about something else, maybe moving to a different part of his thoughts. Wherever you want to come from in this argument or in this um, understanding of scripture, does prayer help you 
stand against this devil schemes or not. It does, right? So whether you want to call it the armor of God, I believe is a part of the armor of God. Whether you want to call it that or not, prayer helps you stand against the schemes of the devil. And I don't want you to underrate prayer. It's very, very, very important. And that leads me to my first task for you today. For over two weeks now, we've been making a habit of praying 30 minutes every day. If you're struggling with this, you're not alone. I want you to reach out on the accountability group and cry for help. I will be here to help you. But today you're going to pray for someone because in verse 18, it says, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. So today your first task is to pray for someone in the body of Christ. It could be anybody, but preferably someone that is not so close to you. Okay. So I want you to pray for somebody that comes to your mind in the body of Christ. Someone that is a believer, pray for their progress, pray for their heart, pray for the preservation of their soul against every plan of the devil. Okay. Spend at least 10 minutes out of your 30 minutes today praying for them. And remember, you don't have to have a heart close. For 30 minutes you can pray longer than 30 minutes okay your next task today is to look for another portion of scripture that talks about praying for people and read that whole chapter so let's say you find the scripture in first corinthians 1 i want you to read the whole of first corinthians 1 to understand why the author of that portion of scripture asked people to pray for other people okay do that and let me know the scripture you pick in the comment section your third task today is to share this video with someone. Oksano is coming to an end and I want people to be blessed just as you've been blessed today and for the past 29 days. Okay, so please share this video with somebody. It's very important and it's mean a lot to me as well. Your last thing or the last I'm going to leave you with today is we are still fasting. Okay, and as I shared yesterday, a guideline for you in fasting with Oxano in this three days is ensure that you don't break your fast before 12. Okay. And don't break your fast before you've done your tasks. So if you wake up by 1130, don't start planning to break your fast by 12. You didn't fast. You were just awake for what, 30 minutes. So please don't do that. You'll be deceiving yourself, not me. Okay. So please don't do that. Um, the whole point is for you to stay focused in these last three days and give God your time. All right. So don't break your fast before 12. And if you've not done your tasks by 12, please do your tasks before you break your fasts. Okay. I'm rooting for you. I love you all very much. I'll be available on the accountability group today to pray with you guys. So if you're struggling, let me know. If you just want to pray with me, let me know. And I'll be there for you as much as I can. All right, thank you so much for tuning in to this point. I love you. See you tomorrow for the last day of Oksano. So sorry. Bye, guys.